Good afternoon. I am here to talk to you about an idea for a monument about the third greatest document in the world. May 14th was a designated day to start the convention on the Constitution, but it actually didn't start until May 25th, 1787, due to the lack of transportation around that time. The Constitutional Convention ended September 17th, 1787, and it lasted 116 days. Fifty-five delegates came to the convention, although there were 70 that were supposed to come, again, due to travel. The U.S. Constitution has been called the bundle of compromises due to the many compromises involved. The three-fifths compromise, the issue how to count slaves, split the delegates into two groups. The northern delegates wanted uh, slaves to be as property who should receive no present representation. The su southerners demanded that blacks be counted as whites so they would have more representatives in the Congress. The compromise allowed a state to count three-fifths of every black person in determining political representation in the House. The Great Compromise, all uh, the Connecticut Compromise, they go hand in hand, and they're the same thing. The Virginia Plan provided um, representation to be based on the population of each state, while New Jersey Plan wanted equal representation for every state. They combined both plans, and it was decided that there would be two chambers in Congress, the Senate and the House of Representatives. The Senate would be based on equal representation, and the House would be based on population. Uh, the slave trade is another compromise that I thought was really important. The Northerns wanted to abolish the practice altogether because they did not like it. And the Southerners felt that it was vital to their economy and they did not want the government interfering. The uh, compromise was that the North and South worked out a 20-year period where they would not deal with this and they would have their kids deal with it instead. So it gave the South 20 more years to keep using slaves and the North just they uh, reacted as 20 years would be done. Uh, here is the monument I plan to build. There are uh, 40 fountains that circle around the whole perimeter, one for every man that signed the document. In the middle, on the next slide, there, there are three plaques in the middle, one for every uh, compromise that I just talked to you about. Um, the next one. And um, along the edge is a plaque that will um, have a name in front of every fountain to represent that delegate and uh, his background. The location of the monument. I plan to build the monument on the lawn right in front of the National Museum of American History because I believe that this is a huge part and really vital to the American history. And we would build it right here because it has, there's nothing, it's just an open slot. Cost and construction. The World War II Memorial is 7.4 acres, and it took $175 million to build. And I'm uh, backing off that one because we will have similar sizes. The Constitution Monument will sit on two acres, roughly, and it will be close to $220 million to build today. The monument will take close to three years to build because that is the same uh, amount of time it took the World War II memorial. And I believe it is very important to build in D.C. because it is what our government is founded on. Forty men signed a document. Thirty out of the fifty, thirty-nine out of the fifty-five delegates who attended the Continental Con Const Convention signed the Constitution. The convention secretary, William Jackson, was the last man to sign it, making that total forty. 
to authenticate the results of the convention sec sessions. The Constitution is called the most important document in American history as it describes the branches of government and how they should be operated. And those are my resources. Any questions for Mr. Mosier about the U.S. Constitution Monument? Michael? Uh, they wrote and made those different compromises, well, they made the compromises, they had the plans, and they came together. That's what it took on in 16 days. Jacob. The first one is the Bible, and the second one is the Magna Carta. Chauncey. What would your uh, monument be made of? It would be made of um, granite, would be the outside ring, and marble would be the plaques in the middle. Yeah. It'll be alphabetical. I mean, How do you plan to get the money? Uh, by uh, donors and um, spa or sponsorships, and um, we'll have some uh, families who have the delegates in their family. Uh, could we could they could give some money if they want to to help build this. So the Constitution is originally. Um, created in 1787. Yeah. Do you find anything in your research to kind of help the cl your classmates with how our country operated its government before the Constitution was created? Um, they ran on um, um, pretty much kind of how England did it in a sort. And then once the Constitution was made, they kind of, and they ran on the... Um, Continental Congress is what they ran on before the Constitution. And uh, when William, William Jackson presented the Continental Congress with the Constitution itself and he read it to them to tell them what they were being replaced by, which was not fun. He did not enjoy that at all because he was telling them that they were going to be replaced. So once these 39 men the delegates, and then Mr. Jackson signed the Constitution, was there a process that had to take place before it automatically became the new guideline for the government, or was it just overnight becomes the new government? How did, how did that work? How, how much time passed between the Constitution being signed and it becoming the official government? Um, I'll have to do some more research on that one, but I didn't. I don't really know how many months it took yet. So, you've got 77 delegates invited. Seven, 70. 70, excuse me. Um, only 55 make it yeah. because of transportation. Mm -hmm. um, only 39 actually choose to sign it. Yeah. So, you give evidence of these three compromises, but that must not have been enough for at least 16 of these men. Um, yeah. What happened to them? Um, there were multiple reasons. Uh, A, they got sick. B, they had to leave early. Or C, they were just um, refusing to sign it. Okay. So if, did any full state delegations refuse, or did, did all of the states have at least one person that represented them, or... How did they get full buy-in on all the 13 states? Uh, Rhode Island never showed. They never had any delegates that came. And um, a lot of the compromises uh, kept all of the rest in, and they in packed, and they could kind of keep everyone on the same page. So what elements of this new government would have been completely brand new to other cultures and societies and governments across the world? Oh, uh, the separation of um, power and the government and not giving just one single person all the power. That was, um, that's what made it one of the top three documents because no one, um, no government has had that and we were the first two and that was pretty weird and strange. And it was kind of, this whole constitution deal was kind of a test to see if it worked or failed. 
A lot of people thought it would fail during the Civil War, but it didn't. It just kept strong. Were there any key personalities that were um, very crucial to the Constitution being written and eventually passed? Um, key individuals or, or maybe even fathers of the Constitution? Um, there were. Um, I can't name them off the top of my head, but I know a lot, a lot of them intertwined and helped. Were there any processes built into the Constitution that allowed it to be manipulated or, or um, maybe updated from time to time so that it stays in continual use? Um, I didn't find anything about that. I'll have to do some so research. Has, has it back. changed at all since 1787? Yeah, it has. There, they have put many new um, uh, rules, you could say, on it, and they've it's changed tremendously. Not uh, big, but some. Any other questions for Mr. Mosher? Let's give him a round of applause.